Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. Welcome to the historic Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and the Commission of United States Ship Manchester. I am Commander Jedediah Kloppel, the ship's executive officer. It is my privilege to be your master of ceremonies today. Before our ceremony begins, please silence your cell phones. We are here today to celebrate the commissioning of USS Manchester, LCS-14. The ship before you was christened in Mobile, Alabama on May 7, 2016. Today she is complete, and this crew is proud to serve on the newest warship in the United States Navy. Our crew is dedicated to carrying on the proud traditions the previous US Navy ship to bear the name Manchester, and to honor the great city whose name she bears. The first USS Manchester, CL-83, was a Cleveland-class light cruiser whose keel was laid in Quincy, Massachusetts in 1944. She operated in the Mediterranean and the Caribbean before reporting to the Pacific Fleet in 1949. There she conducted Far East cruises as a show of force missions to quell the Chinese uprising. In September of 1950, she participated in United Nations blockade missions of the Korean coast, and on September 5th, she conducted shore bombardment in support of amphibious landings at Incheon. She continued service in the South China Sea, helping to slow the advancement of the Communist North until her decommissioning in 1956. During her service to our Navy and our nation, Manchester earned nine battle stars. We are honored to have several former crew members of CL-83 with us today. Would the veterans from the first USS Manchester please stand and be recognized. Thank you for your service. In the same spirit of selfless sacrifice and devotion of the previous ship to bear the name Manchester, this ship will sail the oceans and will stand vigilant against who, those who would threaten democracy and freedom. Our ceremony today is a time-honored tradition which began with the commissioning of our first warship, a captured British schooner, the Margareta, in 1775. Since then, thousands of ships have undergone the transformation from silent hull to fully alive warship. Our commissioning crew, hereafter known as plank owners, are in formation among you and ready to bring our ship alive. In just a few moments, Navy Band Northeast and the Naval Station Norfolk Saluting Battery will render honors to the Honorable Jean Shaheen. Will the guests please rise and remain standing for the arrival of our official party honors, presentation of colors, the national anthem, and the invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, our platform guests, Master Chief Severin Bascom, United States Navy, Command Master Chief, USS Manchester. Also joining our official party is World War II U.S. Navy veteran, Mr. John Costanzo. Lieutenant Commander Scott Shields, United States Navy, Chaplain Corps, Littoral Combat Ship Squadron 1, Command Chaplain. Mr. Porter Davis, Chairman, USS Manchester, Commissioning Committee. Commander Christopher Addington, United States Navy, Littoral Combat Ship's Program Manager's Representative, Supervisor of Shipbuilding Gulf Coast. Commander Andy Gold, United States Navy, Production Officer, Littoral Combat Ship Program. Captain Matthew McGonagall, United States Navy, Commander, Littoral Combat Ship Squadron One. Mr. Craig Percivali, President, Austal USA. Rear Admiral John Nagley, United States Navy, Program Executive Officer for Unmanned and Small Combatants. Ms. Allison Stiller, Principal Civilian Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Research, Development, and Acquisition. The Honorable Jack Blaylock, Mayor, 
City of Portsmouth, New Hampshire. The Honorable Joyce Craig, Mayor, City of Manchester, New Hampshire. Admiral William Moran, United States Navy, Vice Chief of Naval Operations. The Honorable Anne McLean Custer, United States Representative, Second District, State of New Hampshire. The Honorable Maggie Hassan, United States Senator, State of New Hampshire. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Jean Shaheen, United States Senator, State of New Hampshire, is escorted by Commander Emily Bassett, United States Navy, Manchester's commanding officer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, honors to the Honorable Jean Shaheen. Platform and salute. Platform. Ready, two. Advance the colors.
Retire the colors. Platform ready to. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Shields will deliver the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, we who have traveled near and far to share in the joy and excitement of commissioning the USS Manchester into the world's finest navy, welcome to you, you today as our most honored guest. As long as sailors have gone to sea in ships, we have felt the powerful urge and sense of awe and mystery, which takes us from those we love and to whom we long to return. And as long as we sailors have known that life lived only for oneself is not making full use of the abilities and talents God has blessed us with, we have set sail in ships with courage to defend the lives more precious than our own. Today, this amazing ship joins the growing class of littoral combat ships, which bring together uh, each sailor's skill and dedication to successfully navigate both the shallow littorals and the vast deep oceans around the world, and if necessary, to engage any threat on the sea, land, or in the air with power and resolve. As USS Manchester is commissioned this day, we give thanks to each and every person and organization who has invested much in her planning and construction with a great sense of accomplishment and pride. To the Honorable Senator Jean Shaheen for sponsoring this magnificent littoral combat ship, to this great city of Portsmouth, and especially to the people of the city of Manchester, whose name will be heralded wherever in the world USS Manchester sets sail over the horizon. May they be properly honored by her outstanding service, and may our great nation, Lord, look to uh, um, USS Manchester and her amazing crew with pride as the model of professionalism and excellence in execution of every mission they are given, a respected adversary in conflict, an effective deterrent to war, a welcome sight in every port, and a symbol and means of compassionate assistance to all those whose misfortunes make their means of survival, hope, and peace. Gracious Lord, we celebrate this joyous day with a deep sense of gratitude for your presence with us and the dedicated crew of every person who has worked so hard to bring this ship to life. We now ask your ongoing blessing upon this ship, her sailors, the citizens of the Granite State of New Hampshire, and all who are here to witness this grand celebration. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Chaplain Shields. We would like to thank the Navy Band Northeast, the Naval Station Norfolk Saloon Battery, LCS Crew 214's own Color Guard, the New Hampshire, Vermont, Northern Massachusetts, U.S. Navy Sea Cadet Corps, BSA Scout Troop 18, and the Portsmouth High School Marching Band for their support this morning. <laughs> Will the guests please be seated? Manchester, parade, rest. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Jack Blaylock. Thank you. Well, good morning, and welcome to Portsmouth, New Hampshire, our magnificent harbor. We're here to witness the commissioning of the USS Manchester. Special welcome to United States Senator Gene Shaheen, our spon the sponsor of the USS Manchester. I'd also like to welcome U.S. Senator Maggie Hassan, Congresswoman Andy Custer, Admiral William Moran, United States Navy, Mayor Joyce Craig of Manchester, and of course, Commander Emily Bassett and the crew of the USS Manchester. And to all the other distinguished guests here in the podium and in the audience and the visitors, you welcome to Portsmouth. So Portsmouth has always embraced its maritime history uh, and our special connection we have to the United States Navy. 
from the fishermen that arrived in the 1620s to John Paul Jones, uh, some known as the father of the United States Navy that manned his ship here, the, the Ranger, which was built right over across the river on Badger's Island, to the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard, the oldest continuous shipyard established in 1800, which in 1944 launched 32 submarines to help protect our shores and to win World War II, a feat that has never been matched. And uh, last year, uh, I would applaud that as well. Thank you. And just last year, we welcomed the USS New Hampshire, a submarine, into the port. Uh, we are acting as the host city uh, while it's in here for, for its overhaul. And uh, it's our honor and our privilege to host the commissioning of the USS Manchester, uh, the newest littoral combat ship for the United States Navy. Welcome, everyone. Thank you, Mayor Blaylock. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Craig Crisavalli. Good morning, Senator Shaheen, Senator Hassan, Representative Custer, Admiral Moran, Ms. Stiller, Mayors Craig and Blaylock, Admiral Nagley, Commander Bassett, and crew. I'm honored to represent the Austell USA-led industry team that is so proud to have built the soon-to-be USS Manchester. And I'll tell you, there's two very happy moments in a shipbuilder's time when they're building a ship. The first is when you launch a ship and it floats, which is very, very important. <laughs> and the second are days like today when you commission these ships that we build and they enter the fleet and they do what they're designed to do. To us, it just doesn't get any better than this. Manchester is a formidable warship with incredible speed, volume, flexibility, and firepower that will, when manned by the greatest sailors in the world, strike fear in our adversaries across the world. And simply stated, she's the coolest ship on the planet. <laughs> Senator Shaheen, thanks so much for your support for the LCS program and the incredible passion and energy you have ha that you have as sponsor of Manchester. There is no doubt you are the perfect sponsor for this incredible ship. Admiral Nagley, thank you for your leadership, you and your team, and in making the LCS program a success. Uh, we've worked very hard and very uh, well together and to bring this uh, ship to life. Ms. Stiller and Admiral Moran, thank you for giving us the honor to build these ships, and we look forward to building many, 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 many more in the years to come. <laughs> and Commander Bassett, we have built you a great ship, one that will serve you and your crew well as you take her to the tip of the spear to defend our freedom across the globe. On behalf of the 4,000 men, men and women of Austell, USA, down in Mobile, Alabama, and 725 suppliers across 40, slates, 40 states, we thank you for your service, you and your crew, and we wish you fair winds and following seas. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so proud to be here and so proud to be an American. God bless this ship, all those who sail in her, and God bless America. Thank you, Mr. Percivali. Ladies and gentlemen, Rear Admiral John Nagley. Well, good morning. What a great Navy day. There's probably nothing better I get to do in my job than to deliver ships to the Navy and commission them, getting them ready to go out and do the nation's business. Senator Shaheen, Senator Hassan, Representative Custard, honored distinguished guests and friends of LCS, good morning. Welcome to Portsmouth and the commissioning of USS Manchester, 
I could not have envisioned a more meaningful or historical place to place a U.S. warship in commission. Navy history and shipbuilding courses through the lifeblood of this city. And indeed, shipbuilding is in the nation's DNA. From the first six frigates to this magnificent ship, USS Manchester, our nation's history and our nation's freedom has been inextricably tied to the Navy and our ships. So just reflect upon a moment here the historical naval timeline that runs through this great city. Portsmouth Shipyard built the USS Congress, one of the original six frigates in the, in the 1850s that restored USS Constitution. Yes, old Ironsides herself. And the ship again was moored here as a receiving ship in the 1880s. And rumor has it, the ship's missing mass is still over in Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. John Paul Jones, probably the most famous resident of Portsmouth, supervised the building of America in the 1800s. The construction of those first ships was a challenging endeavor. Built from durable materials for, available for construction like white pine, white oak, and most importantly, southern live oak. The live oak was used for the framing of those ships because it was strong, dense, and long-lasting wood. And here in Portsmouth Stable Shipyard, we still have the freshwater ponds where we store some of that live oaks as we did 200 years ago. With the top speed of 13 knots and 38 guns, those first ships, those first frigates, packed a formidable punch. The U.S. Manchester moored here today, here in Portsmouth, represents the best in American industry. We've traded live oak for high-strength aluminum. We've built ships with open modular architecture to rapidly upgrade systems and combat power. We've built it with sophisticated water engines to propel this ship at speeds of over 40 knots. They truly are an engineering marvel. Although the construction of these two ships are quite different, their purpose is the same, to protect and defend the liberties we hold so dear across the globe. LCS-14 will deploy for much of her service life, translating many of the same oceans their legacy namesake did. Manchester and her legacy ships, LCS ships, are the right ship at the right time for the Navy the nation needs. A small combatant that can operate in the world's congested littoral waters, fully engaged with like-minded navies, protecting America's interests across the globe. And if called upon, she'll sail into harm's way. And like her state's namesake motto, live free or die, she'll be ready to fight and win. So on this day, and in this place, with this ship, we connect the legacy of our past with the promise of our future. To the crew of Manchester, as you sail in the few short days, know that you'll always sail with the dedicated men and women who tirelessly constructed this ship. Their pride, professionalism, and sacrifice is in every stringer, weld, and aluminum plate. To quote one of Portsmouth's most famous residents, John Paul Jones, I wish to have no connection with any ship that does not sail fast, so I intend to go into harm's way. Commander Bassett, we have delivered you a ship just to do that. So good luck and Godspeed. God bless Mans Becker. God bless America. Thank you. Thank you, Rear Admiral Nagley. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Joyce Craig. Good morning. It's such an honor and a privilege to be here with all of you. On behalf of the entire city of Manchester, I want to congratulate Commander Bassett and her crew on the commissioning of the USS Manchester. It is such an honor to have a ship named after the Queen City. The city of Manchester was built by hardworking, resilient citizens dedicated to working together for their greater good. And today, the USS Manchester and her crew embody that same spirit. In so many ways, this great ship, ship pays tribute to the Queen City's storied history. The ship's seal highlights our industrious work ethic, from the golden cogwheel that represents our city's industrial history, to the white lines that represent the Merrimack River, to the motto, Labor Vincent, or Work Conquers, which also is the ship's motto. Granite State Manufacturing, 
a fourth generation manufacturing company located on Manchester's west side, built many components used on the ship. And employees from Manchester Waterworks harvested white oak from the shores of Lake Massabesic and helped mill the trees into lumber, which is used in the ship's various ways, including the dashboard, a bench, and the window sills. The Queen City has an extraordinary legacy of military service and honoring those who served this country. And I'm pleased to say, as you heard earlier, there are at least three men in attendance today who were on the original USS Manchester, which was commissioned in 1946. Mo Tremblay, a Manchester resident, Jim Perry, and William Mosier. It's an honor to have you here today. Years from now, when the next chapter of Manchester's military history is written, the new U.S. Manchester, LCS 14, will be a proud part of that history. To her crews and to all the men and women in uniform, thank you for your dedication and commitment to our country. Thank you for your service and Godspeed. Thank you, Mayor Craig. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Anne McLean Custer. Good morning, Senator Shaheen, Senator Hassan, distinguished guests, and to this wonderful crowd. It's so exciting to see so many people here with us today. And you can't see this, but the crowd spreads all the way through Portsmouth. It's such an honor to be with you all today at the commissioning of the USS Manchester. Congratulations to Commander Emily Bassett and the 71 crew members of this impressive ship. You are all on the forefront of US power and presence around the globe. And every day, your service creates a safer and more stable world. And for that, we are eternally grateful. This heartening display of patriotism is fitting for this Memorial Weekend. The spirit of service is strong in the Granite State, and I know I join with everyone in New Hampshire in giving our thanks to those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in defense of our freedom. The sailors of the USS Manchester and all the current and former members of the armed forces in attendance with us today are carrying on the legacy of service that makes the United States a beacon of hope around the globe. I want to extend my congratulations to Senator Shaheen, the ship's official sponsor, and to her pride and perseverance over the past seven years as we come together to commission this ship. The USS Manchester is the pinnacle of modern naval technology and we are truly honored to join Mayor Joyce Craig in the naming of this ship after the Queen City. I know in the years to come, the USS Manchester and her crew will make us all incredibly proud as they serve the United States with courage and valor. Thank you for including me today. God bless you all. God bless this ship and its crew. And God bless the United States of America. Thank you, Representative Custer. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Maggie Hassan. Well, good morning, everyone. It is a great honor to be here today to witness the commissioning of the USS Manchester. In particular, I want to recognize my friend, my colleague, Senator Jean Shaheen, for her years of dedicated work which helped make today possible. Senator Shaheen, congratulations on the well-deserved honor of serving as the official sponsor and permanent member of the crew of this remarkable ship. And if, if you all will allow me a brief moment of personal privilege to the crew of the USS Manchester, you will soon discover that your new crewmate is steadfast, 
she is strong, and she always has her eyes on the future. You couldn't ask for a better partner. I also want to recognize Admiral Bill Moran and our distinguished Navy leadership here today. And of course, thank you to Commander Emily Bassett. Thank you to the entire crew of the USS Manchester and your family members, some of whom have traveled great distances to be here with you today. We truly appreciate your dedicated service to our nation. Just a few miles from here is the John Paul Jones House, where the father of the American Navy lived as the people of Portsmouth fitted out his ship, the America during the Revolutionary War. In the centuries since, New Hampshire has played a plow proud role in US naval history, and that tradition continues today. The commissioning of the USS Manchester is a great honor for our state, for the city of Manchester, and to all of the New Hampshire men and women who have bravely served in our armed forces. As the USS Manchester officially joins the operating forces of the United States Navy today, this ship and all of the brave men and women aboard it will play a critical role in keeping our nation safe, secure, and free. We are profoundly grateful for your service and I will continue working with Senator Shaheen and our colleagues in the Senate to ensure that all of our service members, our veterans, and your families have the support you deserve and have earned. Thank you again to Senator Shaheen and everyone who has helped make today possible. And congratulations. God bless and God speed to the USS Manchester, her brave and steadfast crew. God bless the Granite State and God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Hassan. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Jean Shaheen. Good morning. Look at this crowd, what a crowd. All of the people over there, the number of people who turned out this morning is a reflection of how the high esteem and respect and appreciation which all of us in New Hampshire have for the men and women of the United States Navy and the men and women who serve our country every day, keeping us safe. So thank you very much for being here and for everything that you do to appreciate those who serve us. Thank you. You know, it has been an honor and truly a thrill of a lifetime to be the USS Manchester's official ship sponsor. And, uh, now, it's very comforting to know that I get to serve in this capacity for a lifetime, at least the lifetime of the ship. Don't have to run for re-election. But I also appreciate that serving as the ship's sponsor is not only an honor, it is a solemn responsibility. According to long-standing nautical tradition, the role of ship sponsor is to bestow good luck and divine protection over a seagoing vessel and all who sail aboard it. Well, of course I can't guarantee divine protection. Only the chaplain can do that. But I do pledge as a member of the Senate Armed Services Committee to watch over the Manchester and to advocate for its continued service and well-being. Now, as I said by Navy tradition, the ship sponsor is a permanent member of the crew. And one of the best things about being the sponsor has been the privilege of getting to meet and talk to and know some of the people who serve as the crew of the Manchester. 
They serve our nation with incredible professionalism and excellence. They have been carefully selected for this important posting. And of course, it has been truly not just an honor, but great fun to get to know Commander Emily Bassett. Along with the rest of the crew, I've come to respect this remarkable officer and to admire the commanding presence that flows from her intelligence, from her toughness, and from her grace. She is a role model for all of us, especially for girls and women across New Hampshire. So thank you, Commander Bassett. You know, this is truly a great day, as everyone has said, for Manchester, for Portsmouth, and for the entire Granite State. New Hampshire's always been an Atlantic-facing state, aware of our connections to the world and to the great alliances that help keep our nation safe. The USS Manchester honors our state's legacy of supporting America's national defense and those who bravely serve in uniform, including this magnificent crew. And I want to join the others who have thanked not just the men and women who serve, but also their families, the people who help them and support them in their work every day. Thank you all for being here, and thank you to those who are at home manning the home front while your loved one serves. Now, when given the order to step forward by Admiral Moran, I look forward to bringing our ship to life. Thank you all. Thank you, Senator Shaheen. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Allison Stiller. Thank you, XO. Senators Shaheen and Hassan, Representative Custer, Admiral Howard, distinguished platform guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm delighted to be here representing Secretary of the Navy Richard Spencer at the commissioning of this great ship. Many thanks to Mr. Davis and the entire commissioning committee who have worked so hard to make this day a reality. On this beautiful morning, as we bring this ship to life, I ask that we pause and thank the thousands of servicemen and women who today are sacrificing so much to keep this great nation free. And to those veterans in the audience, thank you for your service. The state of New Hampshire is a fitting place to commission a U.S. Navy warship. Portsmouth Naval Shipyard employs over 5,000 artisans who maintain and repair our nation's submarine fleet. New Hampshire was the birthplace of our 9th, 30th, and 49th Secretaries of the Navy. And New Hampshire is home to 38 Medal of Honor recipients. So today, the New Hampshire tradition of service continues with the commissioning of this great ship, Manchester. Whether here in the Granite State or on the Gulf or West Coast, our security, the strength of our economy, and the face of our diplomacy largely depend upon the Navy's ability to maintain global presence and exercise freedom of the seas. And so our Navy Marine Corps team operates forward. And today, like most days, nearly half of our Navy's fleet is underway. As Secretary of the Navy Spencer recently stated, we are building a more lethal, resilient, and agile force capable of deterring and defeating any enemy in this age of renewed great power competition. To meet his vision, our Navy needs a varied mix of ships and capabilities to conduct missions on all fronts to remain second to none. And so today, we welcome the versatility that Manchester brings to the fleet. She is tailor-made for operations in places where access may be limited, but where presence matters the most. Our ability to command the seas is made possible by the thousands of men and women who work tirelessly to bring ships to life. Shipbuilding is a team sport, 
and today's commissioning is a testament to the skill and professionalism of the Navy industry shipbuilding team. Many thanks to the Navy's program executive officer, Rear Admiral John Nagley, and Austell USA's president, Mr. Craig Percivali, for transforming aluminum, cabling, and equipment into the ship we see before us. Well done. Naval tradition holds that a ship's sponsor's spirit guides the ship throughout her service life. This ship is truly blessed to have as her sponsor, Senator Jean Shaheen, someone who has served New Hampshire both as governor and senator and has demonstrated unwavering support of our military and their families. Senator, you are a permanent member of the ship's crew, the link between today's plank owners and future sailors who will sail on her. Commander Bassett, our Navy has entrusted you with its best, the finest sailors, and our newest warship. May you always embody your ship's motto, Work Conquers. May God bless this fine ship, her namesake, her crew, and her sponsor, and may God bless America. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you our 39th Vice Chief of Naval Operations. Admiral Bill Moran is a senior naval advisor to the Secretary of the Navy and the Chief of Naval Operations. A naval pilot, he is a graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy and the National War College. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my colleague and friend, Admiral Bill Moran. Well, good morning. It is truly a fine Navy day, John. But for all of you out there staring into that sun like you are, we're all up here in the dugout not paying attention. I bet it feels a lot more like you're at Fenway Park right now. In fact, we've been through eight innings. Eight innings of speakers. And we're about to enter the ninth, so hit it. Stand up, take a break. you Yankees fans out there, eat your hearts out. <laughs> well, it is great to be here. I probably should drop the mic on that, shouldn't I? Just get a walk off. You all think that way. I know you do. Uh, but I got I to gotta brag about our Navy. We got, we've got a, a number of things to celebrate today. Of course, we have to commission a brand new warship, and we will here shortly. It is Memorial Day weekend. And it is also a great Navy town that we're having this wonderful ceremony in. But before we kick into the, a few remarks about this ship, its meaning, and the people who serve on it, I would like all the veterans who have served, are serving, or those of you who dream to serve in the service of your country, and I'm talking about not just military police officers, firefighters, teachers, administrators, Please stand and be recognized on this day so that we can honor you. Thank you. So it is a privilege for all of us to be here. And on behalf of the sailors, 
men and women who serve around the globe and who look forward desperately to welcoming USS Manchester into the fleet. Thank you for allowing us to be here today. And it is an honor for me to personally share the stage or share this podium with Senator Shaheen, Senator Hassan, Hassan, excuse me, all the other distinguished representatives and guests up here. And I also want to recognize my dear friend in our Navy's very first female four-star flag officer, Michelle Howard, who is here all the way from Colorado to honor us today. Thank you, Mike. Now, we all know we've heard that Portsmouth is a city that values the traditions and the rich history of the United States Navy. And it also values, as Senator Shaheen said, the whole state does, values the service of our men and women who volunteer to serve this country. But I think you will agree that this is a pretty awesome ship behind me, right? The best part about it, though, is it's named after an all-American city, a city that was raised in the textile age and has emerged into a modern age, the great city of Manchester. So for all of you out there standing that are from Manchester, all of you sitting here, thank you. Uh, it has been a long time coming, 62 years since we had a USS Manchester in the United States Navy, and she's finally back. So thank you, everybody. So let me just talk for a minute on the world stage that this ship is about to set off on. America is and always will be a maritime nation. And the strategic environment in which we sail is increasingly congested, it's contested, it's complex, and the pace of change is accelerating every single day. All you got to do is look at the headlines, and you know what I'm talking about. We are definitely in uncertain times as a nation. For the first time in three decades since the fall of the Berlin Wall, we are in serious competition with folks that would have another view of international world order. There is urgency in the salt air that we feel and smell today because the stakes are high. Let's not kid ourselves. But here's the good news. The good news is today the USS Manchester is going to join a winning team that is going to beat our competition. Now, I'm just one in a million sailors, civilians, contractors, industry employees who get up every single morning to serve in the United States Navy. My story is not an important one, but Manchester is where my dad was born and raised. And he brought us to the shores of Salisbury, Seabrook, Hampton, and Rye Beach. So Manchester and the USS Manchester have personal meaning for me. Just down the road from here on Route 1A, like many of you, I was first introduced to that strong, strong scent of the Atlantic Ocean. There's nothing quite like it when you're around that turf. And from that moment on, somehow, as a young kid, I knew that the sea was going to be part of my life for a very long time. So being here with you today, so close to where that sea existed for me, provides me personal inspiration about sailors who serve in our Navy. And it reminds me of how sailors complete the miracle of naval power. It is, after all, like many speakers have already said, our sailors, the young men and women who volunteer to serve our country and carry with them the values of the American dream that together with this stuff behind me, this ship, this aluminum hulk, have the power to intimidate and our sailors have the power to inspire when they deploy. USS Manchester is an obvious beauty, big, strong, powerful. 
a tangible contribution to the Navy the nation needs, but it's your crew that makes the American miracle possible. So I'll ask all of you, what do you see when you go to a museum, especially a Navy museum, or any of the art stores that are peppered throughout the Market Street here in Portsmouth? You see pictures, you see paintings, you see models of ships, submarines, airplanes, you see all that stuff. And what's often missing, if you look, is what? You don't see people. You don't see the sailors. And they're the ones who bring our Navy to life, as the Senator said. We need to see them to understand that we have the power to inspire as well as to intimidate as a Navy. So while our minds are on Manchester, as a modern piece of hardware, our hearts are with your sailors. Shortly, Senator Shaheen will call for the crew to come aboard and bring this ship to life. That calling, that calling of the crew symbolizes how the miracle really works. Manchester will only be as capable as the crew is capable. She will be prepared because her crew is committed to being ready. And know that when the orders come, and they will come, it is the CO and the crew, the ones that are there at that moment, who will be motivated to execute those orders. So to Commander Emily Bassett and other leaders in this crew, I have two simple messages for you. Use your minds to be ready for action and make sure your heart, your heart is with your sailors. Sailors do not care what you know until you know they care. And Emily, you have been a shining example of that, a shining example of that phrase. The crew has learned from their captain the very best leaders value the sailors for the content of their character and the ability to deliver when called upon. And so, ladies and gentlemen, the threat is real, but it's with great sailors and great stuff like the Manchester that we will stay ahead and we will win in the future. This ship will mean a great deal to those who serve in her. Manchester, the city, means a great deal as well. Both bring forward pride and joy, USS Manchester for the crew, and the city of Manchester, which for me still feels, on most days, like the kid whose New Hampshire dad introduced him to the smell of the sea along these shores. So thank you for coming out today in mass to celebrate your Navy and this crew have a safe and memorable Memorial Day. And I hope you'll remember the faces, the faces of the men and women who serve on Manchester in the finest Navy on the planet. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Admiral Moran. I would be honored if you would now place Manchester in commission. Absolutely. On behalf of the Secretary of the Navy and for the President of the United States, I hereby place United States ship Manchester in commission. May God bless and guide this warship in all who shall sail in her. Thank you, Admiral Moran. Executive Officer, hoist the colors and commission pennant. Aye, ma'am. Manchester, a tin hut. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and direct your attention to the ship's mass, folksal, and fantail as we hoist the colors and commission pennant. Quartermaster, hoist the colors and commission pennant. Aye, sir.
Captain, the colors and commission pennant are flying over USS Manchester. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. I will now read my orders. From Commander, Navy Military Personnel Command, to Commander Emily Bassett, United States Navy. Subject, Buper's Order Number 2724 of 05 November 17. When directed by reporting senior, detach from presence duty and report to pre-commissioning unit Manchester as commanding officer. Upon commissioning of USS Manchester, report for duty as commanding officer. Admiral Moran, United States ship Manchester is in commission and I am in command. Executive officer, set the watch. Aye, aye ma'am. Officer of the deck, set the first watch. Aye, aye, sir. The officer of the deck is the commanding officer's direct representative and, while on watch, is responsible for the safe operation of the ship and crew. The long glass is the traditional symbol of an officer of the deck's authority in the ship of the line. We are pleased to have Mr. John Costanzo from Durham, New Hampshire, who will pass the long glass to our first officer of the deck, Lieutenant Adrian Pinkasek from Mont Vernon, New Hampshire. The petty officer of the watch is the information systems technician, first class, Angela Robinson from Lincoln Park, Michigan. The messenger of the watch is culinary specialist, second class, Stephen Randolph from Prince George, Virginia. And the bosun's mate of the watch is Chief Bosun's mate, Justin Smith, from Gainesville, Florida. Set the watch on deck, section one. Sir, the watch is set. Very well. Captain, the watch is set. Very well. We are delighted to have our sponsor, Senator Gene Shaheen, here with us today. Senator Shaheen christened this ship in Mobile, Alabama in May 2016. Senator, I would be honored if you would join me and give the order to man our ship and bring her to life. Officers and crew of the USS Manchester, bring our, man our ship and bring her to life.
Ladies and gentlemen, the crew of USS Manchester salutes you. We are proud to serve in your great Navy. Manchester, ready, two. Will the guests please be seated? Captain, USS Manchester is manned and ready. Very well. Commodore McGonagall, USS Manchester is manned and ready and reports for duty. Very well. Admiral Moran, request permission to break your flag, sir. Executive Officer, break the flag of the Vice Chief of Naval Operations. Aye, ma'am. Quartermaster, break the flag of the Vice Chief of Naval Operations. Aye, sir. Captain, the flag of the Vice Chief of Naval Operations is flying over USS Manchester. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, Commander Emily Bassett, United States Navy, Commanding Officer, USS Manchester. Manchester, parade rest. Wow, I am standing up here with chills, about to burst with pride. I hope you feel it too, that amazing feeling the pride for this amazing country, this amazing ship, and this amazing crew. And this pride is why many of us join our military. And I know it's why many of you chose to be with us here today, so thank you. Distinguished platform participants, Alma Moran, Rear Admiral Negley, Senator Shaheen, Senator Hassan, thank you. Honored guests, Admiral Michelle Howard, my first commanding officer of my first ship in the Navy, thank you. The Honorable Robert Sherman, former U.S. Ambassador to Portugal, thank you for being here, sir. Thank you to the Commissioning Committee, the host city of Portsmouth, for bowing us away with your amazing hospitality. Thank you to our namesake city, Manchester, for welcoming us with open arms. We are proud to sail in your name. Our relationship with you started when you invited us to your schools and your museums and your city hall last year, and it will continue for the life of this ship. Thank you. To our amazing, gracious, most supportive ever sponsor, the Honorable Senator Jean Shaheen. Thank you. You have been with us every step of the way, sending notes, care packages, tokens of appreciation, and overwhelming support. Your spirit is definitely with this ship, and we work hard to keep you proud. Thank you. But most of all, I want to thank our families. Our Navy families make countless sacrifices supporting us from afar. My husband, Will, our son, Edward, and our daughter, Isabel. Thank you. I know you may feel alone when you are moving across country without me, and only one parent is checking your homework or cheering you on at soccer games and cuddling you at night. Know that you are joined by ranks of families who sacrifice every day. And today, you got to see a little bit of why. I wish you all could see what I have seen. The faces of these sailors running to man this ship are the faces that I have seen day after day for the past 22 months, working hard to bring this ship to life. They have taken the city of Manchester's motto, Work Conquers, and they have personified the spirit of our namesake city with every weapon they've cleaned, every program they built, every space they inspected, every watch they stood, and every fire drill they performed. I have seen this crew land and launch helicopters, conduct a vertical replenishment, transferring cargo by aircraft. I've seen them weigh anchor, launch and recover our boat, transfer passengers ashore, shoot our guns, and conduct high-speed operations. 
and all of that was just on our way up here for this ceremony. <laughs> I wish you could see how this crew works as a team. Manned with only 70 sailors while comparable ships in our Navy are manned with close to 250 means that each sailor is highly trained. One sailor must do the duties that three or four would do on other ships. Each sailor is trained and cross-trained, and no duty is too big or too small for any rate or rank. Everyone pitches in to get the job done. We can all shoot the guns, we can all take tank-level indicator readings, and we can all wash the dishes. I wish you could hear what I have heard. You would hear every single inspector, every visitor, every guest who has ever come aboard this ship track me down to say, Captain, you've got a great crew. Or Captain, this is the best crew I've seen in a long, long, long time. Or this crew made me better. Or I've seen some great crews and they usually have a few great people, but on this crew, everyone is great. Every single on this ship is a superstar. Well, every sailor on this ship is a superstar because they are resilient, they work as a team, and they take setbacks on board as learning experiences. And they do this inspired by the nine stars in our crest, which we wear in our ball cap, which represents the character of the sailors of the previous USS Manchester, CL-83, who earned nine battle stars for wartime engagement in Korea. We are honored to have one of those sailors with us today, sir. Thank you. The resilient character of these World War II era sailors is in our ball claps and in our blood. I wish you could be where this crew has been. 10 months deployed to the shipyard to Mobile, Alabama, away from family, away from their homes. Yet, instead of sailing back home to San Diego, this crew wanted to come to New Hampshire. They were willing to spend the extra month of transit and preparation time to sell here, out of our way, to Portsmouth, New Hampshire, to share their pride in this great warship with the people of Manchester, the people of New Hampshire, and the people of our nation. It is the honor of a lifetime to be counted among those sailors who brought this ship to life. This country, this state, this city, this ship, these sailors are reasons to make us all proud. Manchester, a tan hut. Will the guests please rise for the benediction? Let us pray. Eternal Father, from whom we come and to whom we will ultimately return, we commend USS Manchester, her sailors, and their families to your constant care and keeping. Bless now her captain and crew as well as the thousands of sailors in the future who will run her engines, cook her meals, fix her machines, hoist her flags, and navigate her upon the great oceans and seas of this world. That USS Manchester's name would be great among those whose judgment is honored and her fame may spread throughout the world. That young sailors may desire to serve aboard her and all would admire her many accomplishments. Gracious Lord, on this Memorial Day weekend, grant us all loyalty and devotion to our nation's glorious heritage of freedom and democracy, a gift from you, our fathers, our founders, and those who made the ultimate sacrifice. Uphold and sustain our country and its military in the pursuit of peace through power, and grant the citizens of this great nation would continue to draw in constant strength and support from you, whose perfect love is our peace, and whose peace is our power. The Lord Almighty bless us and keep us. The Lord watch over our going out and our coming in. The Lord direct our days and our deeds in his peace from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Shields.